I have a surprise for you today. We're going to explore some of the design lessons found in the movie Emma and learn how to bring those same principles into our own homes. So stick around. Hi, I'm Marina Coates. Welcome to Cinematically Inspired Design, where we take the design secrets from the cinema and bring them into your home. Today we're going to focus on a delicious little slice of design, the set design found in Autumn DeWilde's adaptation of Emma. Every good movie starts with a storyboard. Before a movie begins, the production designer draws up storyboards that show all of the critical scenes in the movie. They kind of look like a comic strip, but they don't just stage the scenes, they help set the mood of the film. They give the movie its distinct look and feel, and of course, color has a big part to do with that. The storyboards for Emma must have been amazing. Before we really dive into the design lessons found in Emma, let's just sample some of the enticing set designs that were offered up as a visual feast for us. So yummy. I think by the time we're done today, you will have discovered several design takeaways for your own home among the many delectable scenes they presented to us in this film. Let's start with some of their different ways of using color. As we look at this beautiful light pink room with all of the ornate embellishments and creamy white, you'll notice that they made sure to have some dark items in the room as well. For example, the wood table and benches, as well as the pedestal stands, and in this shot even the servants with their dark green attire. What this does is keep the room from feeling like it's too light and airy, almost floating. Every room needs a little dark in it to anchor it down a bit. I think it's best understood by actually seeing it played out. So I've taken a room and made everything in it light. I didn't get rid of color, You'll notice I have blue and green and pink and orange, but I've kept everything very light. And in fact, if we change the scenery outside the window to something lighter, you'll see that the room tends to float, meaning there's nothing substantial to weigh it down. It's too light, too airy, but it doesn't take much. A darker rug, a piece of furniture, or artwork can change the whole tone of the room. Now we'll go back to that gorgeous pink room from Hartfield Estate. If we block out all of the darker items in the room, it feels like an altogether different room. You need the opposition in a room. It adds more interest and grounds it. The same is true in your homes. In a similar vein, having only two colors in a room tends to make it somewhat bland. There needs to be an accent color, even if it's minimal. For example, look at this shot from the movie. It's gorgeous. It's almost all light blue and cream, but the addition of burgundy and pink in both the rug and her dress details contributes a great deal to the scheme, even though the amounts are small. To illustrate what this adds, I've replaced the rug with one that is just blue and cream, and I've removed the rose color from her dress. You can see that it's just not quite as interesting of a space that minimal addition of color made a big difference. Interesting side note, in an interview with Elle Decor, director Autumn DeWilde says that they painted the stairwell blue and white like Wedgwood pottery, an item popular at the time Emma would have lived. They just didn't miss one single detail and it shows. When you fall in love with a movie home, the chances that they spent time paying attention to the details is 100%. And as long as we're talking about details, notice how the beautiful pastel colors worked their way into the church, the fabric shop, the costumes, and all the way down to the book that holds the music, and even the desserts, of which there is quite an amusing amount of throughout the film. Sweet. In this scene, we watch as George Knightley 
makes his way from his private chambers through the more public rooms of his estate. Notice how they switched around the main and secondary colors. In his private room, we see dark red or burgundy as the main color, with cream and gold as accents. But as he moves out into one of the main rooms, we see those roles reversed. Here, cream and gold are the main colors, and burgundy becomes the accent. This keeps the rooms coordinating without a complete repetition of the palette, which would become somewhat stale. A great idea to implement in your own home. This is a principle I cover more thoroughly in Cinematically Inspired Design, Episode 2. Design and lighting are intricately connected, and never more so than in set design. Take a look at these different scenes from the movie. Some are dimly lit, and some are full of sunlight. And then there are warm and cool tones. Each has its own distinct look and feel. You can achieve similar results in your home using dimmers on your light switches, so you have much more control over the lighting and the ambiance. And you can also use warm or cool tone light bulbs. These two things combined are like adding a Photoshop or Instagram filter to your home. Take advantage of it. In these estates, of course, the walls were filled with grand artwork, but I want to concentrate on other elements that became artwork in and of themselves. For example, the amazing wallpaper. In the Woodhouse Breakfast Room, we see the most divine dark apricot pink wallpaper. It simply makes the room. And yet, if it were everywhere, it would overwhelm the space. We needed the heavy white trim around the windows with the white sheer curtains to give us a breather from all that pattern and color, like a palette cleanser. Another room with a great example of this is Emma's room, one of my favorites. Here they've trimmed out chinoiserie panels on the walls. Again, this keeps the room from being overwhelmed with walls that are ceiling to floor pattern and color. Another movie where this was done was in Remains of the Day. You see the fabric framed out in panels as if they were hanging works of art. Chinoiserie was Europe's version of Asian artistry and was very popular in the 18th century. In fabrics and wall coverings, it often depicts scenery with animals, buildings, and flowers. I want to break down the formula they used here in Emma's room and use it as inspiration for a master bedroom. No doubt the design in Emma's room began with the fabric chosen for the room, the main color of which is a pale peachy pink. This becomes the main color on the walls. Then they pulled out a secondary color from the fabric, in this case a soft blue, and they used it on the inset where the panels are hung. The panel itself is framed in a dark gold bronze color. Because a great deal of the room has cream panels, moldings, trim, and window seats, it allows for the use of the same fabric on the headboard and curtains. If it wasn't for these pauses in the pattern and strong color, it would be too much. But in these doses, it's delightful, like adding cream on a fruit dessert. But they didn't stop there. They pulled out one more color from the fabric, a deep apricot. This is used on the bedding and the window seat cushions. So let's take this recipe for design and see how it might work in a master bedroom. By following the same rules they used, I started by choosing a fabric I liked that was reminiscent of chinoiserie. Then I pulled out one of the main colors for the walls. Here I used the dark teal tone. The secondary color I pulled out was the burnt orange. This became the color applied to the insets where the fabric panels were hung. The panel itself was framed out with a dark bronze. Then I used the same fabric on the footboard and pillows of the bed, and I brought in the dark orange again on the bedding itself. I made sure the room had a lot of light trim work, panels and moldings to keep the room from being too dark and to give a breather in the design. And here's a slightly different version of the same method, mixing it up a little, this time adding a third color, a golden yellow, that was found in the fabric. Now let's see the same room with the same techniques applied, but this time on a teenage girl's room. 
Again, I started with the fabric and went from there. You can see that these principles would work with a number of different room scenarios, even a kitchen. Another form of art often overlooked in a room is flowers. In the movie Emma, they were not shy about it. We see an abundance of floral arrangements in the rooms and each one is kept to a large scale within that room. These are no little tiny afterthoughts. These are a part of the room design. And now we're even going to visit the costumes from the film, and here's why. As mentioned in a previous episode, the costumes the characters wear in a scene can often give you an idea of other colors you can bring into the room that will go well with the color scheme. For example, we saw earlier how the servants wearing the dark green clothing worked really well in the pink and cream and blue room. The set designers have gone to a lot of effort to make the different scenes visually appealing. They've done some of the work for us and they're masters at it. So, if you fall in love with a room in a movie, look to see what the characters are wearing too and see if it is part of what makes that room work for you. Along those same lines, look at this image from the film. Here we see Mr. Woodhouse sitting in his chair by the fire. Notice how his clothing, the chair, and the pillow behind him all have different patterns and yet they don't clash, they work together. How does that happen? Well, not by accident. I learned a neat trick on an old design show called Homeworks, hosted by Lynette Jennings. She taught that you can mix stripes and geometrics and florals together as long as they differ in scale. So for example, you might have a large geometric pattern and you can mix it with a medium stripe and a small scale floral. But if they were all to be on a large scale, for example, the patterns would compete. If you want two of the same type of pattern together, such as these geometrics, then just make sure they're on different ends of the spectrum one large scale and one small scale. And of course you want to keep some of the same colors in the patterns too as shown here. A couple more things about art before we go on. If you have a long hallway, one way to liven it up is to turn it into an art gallery by hanging art all in a row down the corridor. This works best if there's a lot of light. If you aren't fortunate enough to have windows on one side as they do here, you can add picture lights above the paintings, giving it even more of a feeling of an art gallery, and you can make sure that the hall itself is well lit. And this I want to just throw in because I felt it was a nice little detail in the film. Notice as Emma turns around, she's mimicking the pose of the woman in the painting that she was looking at. Details always contribute to a masterpiece, whether it's a work of art, a film, or a room. Don't scrimp on the details. When you fall in love with a movie home, there are always reasons behind it. Good set design is full of inspiration for us in our own homes. You don't want to copy a room, but you can use it for inspiration. Figure out what it is about that cinematic home that you love. Sometimes the inspiration can come from the colors in a film. I've taken some scenes from the movie Emma and pulled out some of the colors for you onto the side. These can serve as inspiration for your own home. I'm going to give you an example. When I saw this scene from the film, I just fell in love with the rich blend of fall colors. I wanted to use the colors as well as some other elements from this scene for a room I was working on. The first color that caught my eye was the coat that George Knightley is wearing. Not just the main pumpkin color, but also the chocolate brown found in the cuffs and collar as well as the servant's coat. I wanted to make sure those colors played a major factor in the room. I used the pumpkin-y color of his coat on the desk chair because it kind of takes center stage and can be made of fabric like the coat. I brought the brown in in the trim around the chair as well as on the top of the desk, which is leather. Next, I realized that different shades of cream and gold played heavily into why I liked this scene so much. Some of that is obviously just due to the lighting, but still I wanted to use it that way. 
So I had the cabinetry, furniture pieces, and mantle be done in the light cream, and I added the darker cream color to the walls. I brought in the dark gold bronze light color into the light fixture, the picture frames, the shelving, and trim detail on the cabinetry. Next I realized that the rusty red found in the curtains, the rug, and the bowl on the table factored into my love of this set design. So I brought those in in the curtains, rug, bowl, and flowers. The accent color that really completed this scene for me was the dark navy blue found on Mr. Knightley's vest. It played a smaller role but was important. I brought this color in with the chair and a few decor items. When I was finished, this den had the same mood attached to it that attracted me to the scenes in the film. Some more thoughts on design inspiration from this film. I'm sure it's no accident that this dining room scene resembles a painting similar to those on their walls. Well, you could use that principle in reverse. In other words, find a painting you love and design a room around it, drawing inspiration from the elements of the painting that intrigue you. You can get inspiration from almost anything. If you see a fabric you love, pull ideas from that. It means you've already found a color combination you like. Now put it to use in a room. Even the desserts in the rooms could be inspiration for a room in your own home. The colors and the detailing could play out in a design concept for a nursery, a bathroom, a kitchen, or whatever your mind can come up with. Design inspiration can come from merely looking for things around your environment that catch your attention. This shot in the film of Frank Churchill's painting of the Eskom estate immediately caught my attention and it had my mind going for a future design project I want to do. Think about it. The set designers have already gone to so much effort to make a scene a work of art to make it visually appealing, to captivate the audience, to add drama and create a mood. Why wouldn't we want to borrow from their expertise? If you fall in love with a movie home, examine why. Get it down to the details, break it down. If you want that same feeling or mood or tone in your home, figure out why it works and use it as inspiration when designing rooms in your house. I hope you got some ideas today for your own home. Stick around at the end and you'll see the people responsible for the amazing set design you saw today. If you don't want to miss an episode, make sure you subscribe below. And in case you didn't know, I have another show on this same channel called Behind the Scenes, where I recreate TV and movie homes, adding ceilings and all four walls, and let us walk around inside of them. If that sounds like something you'd like, you can check them out here. But as for today, that's a wrap. See you next time on Cinematically Inspired Design. Emma was based on Jane Austen's novel. The director was Autumn de Wilde. The cinematographer was Christopher Blavelt. The production designer was Cave Quinn. The art director was Alice Sutton. The set decorator was Stella Fox. Costume design was by Alexandra Byrne. Others who contributed to the design of this film are as follows.